Hey, it's Cairo. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at all the blue cards from the Brothers War, the new coming set for Magic the Gathering. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more colors in the set review. And there's a playlist link below if you want to see the previous videos. We have white done so far. Without further ado, let's get into it with our first card. It is Air Marshal. One blue, one generic for a common. It's a 2-1 human soldier. We're going to see a lot of blue soldiers in this set. You can pay three generic mana and target soldier gains flying until end of turn. Seems like a pretty good limited card, not going to be constructed playable for standard. By the way, this video is going to focus mostly on standard. I'll mention limited here and there, but standard is what I play and that's what I know best. So here we go. Curate. One blue, one generic for an instant. Surveil two. Now, if you haven't seen Surveil for a while, that means look at the top two cards of your library. Put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library in any order so this is going to be kind of cool with unearth there's a lot of unearth things in this set and in standard there's a lot of flashback and disturb things especially in blue and white so there could be some uses there curate uh surveil to draw a card yeah it could be could find a home in uh maybe something that there's an unearth deck or something like that it's not impressing me a lot right now it doesn't really fit into the mono blue tempo and standard right now so it's like meh it might see play might not Next is Defabricate. One blue, one generic. Choose one. Instant. Counter target artifact or enchantment spell. If a spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. So I already mentioned that there's unearth in this set, so it's pretty cool to be able to exile an artifact so they can't unearth it back. Or you can counter target activated or triggered ability. The usefulness here might be pretty cool with things like Fable the Mirror Breaker, where it comes back in as a reflection of Kiki Jiki, you could counter that, giving them uh, no payoff at the end of that. Um, you could counter Planeswalker abilities, all kinds of stuff. I think it's likely that Defabricate sees play. Probably not a four of in any deck. It doesn't counter creatures, only artifacts or enchantments, so it's a little bit narrow there, but whenever you want to counter a triggered ability or an activated ability, that's pretty huge. So maybe one or two. Next we have Desynchronize. Four and one blue for an instant. Target non-land permanence owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library and scry two. Right now, this is a little expensive to see standard constructed play. Uh, five mana to bounce something either to the top or bottom of the library and scry two. It's not really where we want to be. Five is a lot in the current standard, so I think this is probably a limited card. Um, the usefulness there, I'm not sure, but doubt this will see standard constructed here's our first really interesting card this is drafna founder of latnam one blue one generic for a two one legendary creature it's a human artificer advisor it's rare you can tap one blue one generic to return target artifact you control to its owner's hand and you can also tap three tap drafna and copy target artifact spell that you control we know that Brothers War is artifact heavy, and we've seen some really good artifacts in the form of prototype and things like that. So this is obviously a heavy, heavy build around card. If you have artifact synergies, it doesn't do anything without you having artifacts on the field or, or having plans to cast artifacts. So basically the stipulation here is Drafna is gonna be really good if you have a lot of good artifacts in your deck. And if you don't, then he's just gonna be a two, one, two drop. So build around him and get some good artifacts and he'll be good. Falaji Archaeologist, common, one blue, one generic for a zero three. When Falaji Archaeologist enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a non-creature, non-land card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. And if you don't, put a plus one, plus one counter on Falaji Archaeologist. This card's quite good for a common. It's a two drop, worst case scenario, it's a one four. And best case scenario, it gets you an instant that you need, or an enchantment that you need, or a planeswalker that you need. I mean, this is this is quite good. It's better than just drawing a card when it comes in. Um, milling three cards means that you have less access to those cards. But again, if you have Unearth in your deck, there could be some graveyard synergies there. If you don't care about the things that are milled and you have duplicates, Grabbing a Planeswalker, even if you draw this late or something, to finish out a game, especially if you're in blue, pretty strong. This is a this is a strong uh, common, and it wouldn't surprise me of the commons that we're seeing so far if this one sees the most play. 
Next we have Flow of Knowledge. One blue, four generic for an instant. Draw a card for each island you control, then discard two cards. The immediate application for this would be the current mono blue tempo deck, although they really don't want to pay five for things. But it would be really cool to pay five or six. Uh, well, pay five, but have like five or six islands and then get to draw five or six cards and discard two cards. Again, with Unearthed Synergies, I think it's a little bit too expensive for the current mono blue deck. I think Thirst for Knowledge is uh, the three drop card draw spell that you really want to stick around at. Silver Scrutiny exists right now, and it's not run. It's just a little bit too expensive. So Flow of Knowledge, I think maybe if there ends up being a uh, Azorius Control or something, tapping five and being able to draw four for this or something, that's probably where you want to be. It's going to be a little bit hard, though, because it's dependent on only islands. So, jury's out on this one. It seems okay. Next, we have Forging the Anchor. One blue, two generic for an uncommon sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of artifact cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This card's going to be really good if we have a blue, blue and artifact, basically, deck. You have a lot of good artifacts in here. Revealing any number of them and putting them in your hand. I mean, you're talking maybe getting two or three for three mana. It is a sorcery, so you have to commit um, early. It's kind of going to hurt if you're playing against aggro. But if you draw this late, say you're kind of the board's kind of stalled out and you have a lot of good artifacts in your, your deck, draw this on turn five or six, play this, refill your hand. Pretty good. Could see some play. Herkel, Master Wizard. Two blue and one generic for human wizard advisor, legendary creature, stats of 2-4, so defensive creature. At the beginning of your end step, if you've cast a non-creature spell this turn, reveal the top five cards of your library. For each card type among non-creature spells you've cast this turn, you may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand. And put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Hercule's pretty good. So if you cast a sorcery, you get a sorcery. If you cast a instant on your turn, like if you're just fading hope on your turn, you can go get an instant. You can, if you cast an artifact, you can go grab an artifact. Has to be a non-creature artifact, but vehicles, planeswalkers, whatever. So, Hercule stays out there. You start playing stuff on your turn that aren't creatures, and you're drawing cards and replacing them. Hercule's gonna see some play somewhere. Maybe not immediately, but as we add more sets to standard, Hercule will see play. It's a good card. Hercule's Final Meditation. Three blue, four generic for an instant. As long as it's not your turn, this spell costs three generic more to cast, so it actually costs ten if you do it on your opponent's turn. This is return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands and end the turn. Exile all spells and abilities from the stack, including this card. The player's turn it is, discards down to their maximum hand size, damage wears off, and this turn and until end of turn effects end. Kind of a weird card. Um... I'm not sure that you're going to be able to cast this a lot on your opponent's turn for 10 mana. This is an instant. If this was something like an activated ability on an artifact that you could sack to do, uh, Power Stones could help you pay for this. But typically this is probably going to be, like on your turn, just a mass bounce. We've seen something like this within a call time where we had like a 7 or 8 drop giant that returned like all non-giant, non-wizards permanents to hand. That's all a little bit of play. <clears throat> this is a little bit better than that. This probably will see play. We might have to wait a couple months for new sets to come out to see Control really blossom and bloom into the powerhouse that it that it could be. Um, I'm going to say this probably does see play. It might not be a format staple, but it's a good card. Involuntary Cooldown. One blue, three generic for a sorcery. Tap up to two target artifacts and or creatures and put two stun counters on each of them. This is a little bit expensive. And it's just a purely tempo card. So you have to do this on your turn. You can't do this at instant speed. But the two stun counters mean that those things don't untap uh, for two turns. So I don't think this is really going to see play being that it's sorcery. You don't really want to tap out four mana. But, it could see some play in Limited. I think it's probably pretty decent there. Keeper of the Cadence. One blue, four generic for a 2-5 human wizard. 
three generic mana, put target artifact, instant or sorcery card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. This is five mana for a two five, and it's very situational. This strikes me as sideboard tech against reanimator decks. They discard something to their Fable the Mirror Breaker. You get the idea that they're going to be reanimating a Titan Industry or something like that in the graveyard. Yeah, you bring this in, tap three mana, get rid of that, put it on the bottom of their deck, never to be seen again. Other than that, this can't be main deckable. Next is Koilos Rock. One blue, four generic. For a 3 3 flash flying. And when Koilos Rock enters the battlefield, create a tap Power Stone token. This strikes me as being a pretty good common for limited, not constructed playable. The Power Stone token could come into play here, but a 3 3 flash flying for 5 is actually not super bad. If this costs 4, it would be pretty damn good. Next is Latnam Adept, one blue, three generic for a three three human wizard. When you draw your second card each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Latnam Adept. So I'd much prefer this card if it was a two two for three mana, so one less mana and a little bit fewer stats so you can get out there and start getting the benefits early. As far as a common goes, I think there's a Demir deck in the limited format that's going to be blue and black that relies on you drawing two cards each turn should be good there not standard playable machine over matter one blue one generic for an instant this spell costs one less to cast if you control an artifact creature return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand this could see play if you're doing a blue and artifact deck being able to bounce a non-land permanent to its owner's hand for one blue mana is actually pretty potent you're talking about big artifacts you're talking about enchantments, especially things that come down like Hallowed Haunting or, you know, four and five cost enchantments. You're talking about Planeswalkers as well. They're going to be able to activate it once, but returning that, making them recast, stuff like that. Yeah, this is a good card. Mightstone's Animation. One blue, three generic for an enchantment aura. Enchant Artifact. When Mightstone's Animation enters the battlefield, draw a card. An enchanted artifact is a creature with base power and toughness 4-4 in addition to its other types. So best case scenario here looks like it's going to be you put this on a power stone token and then all of a sudden your power stone token is a 4-4 creature. Um, if we go that route, that seems best case scenario. You're looking at a 4-drop 4-4 draw card. Not the worst thing in the world. Don't think it'll see a lot of play. Next is one with the multiverse. This is a eight cost enchantment. It's a mythic rare. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana costs. This is a powerful spell, no doubt. This costs eight to get down. It's an enchantment. I would hate for this thing to get destroyed or bounced. Um, hopefully if you're in blue you have some counters or you have a counter on top of your deck that you could protect this thing with. One thing that's notable though is once during each of your turns, meaning that you have to cast instants from your hand on your turn if you want to cast them without paying their mana cost. But giving you essentially a heads up look at your next card that you're going to draw and then being able to play lands, play those, and then maybe you have a non-land on top that helps win you the game, this is a pretty big bomb. And I think this probably will see some play. Uh, it is an enchantment, though, so Power Stones are not going to help you with this. You're going to have to cast this for 8. Or if you're in Bant, and you have the Jakai Naturalist that makes enchantments cost less, you could do it there for maybe like 6 or something if you have 2 of them out. But this is a long game commitment. This is in control. One with the Multiverse is super powerful, though. <clears throat> it's a good card. Should see some play. Retrieval Agent. One blue, three generic for common, two five, human soldier, two mana retrieval agent gets plus one, minus one till end of turn. So if you tap six mana, it becomes a five, two, not standard playable, limited, fine, maybe. Scatter ray, one blue, one generic for an instant, counter target artifact or creature spell unless its controller pays four. I could see this put, seeing play for sure. It's an essence scatter, that's not a hard counter in terms of creature, but if your opponent has a big artifact and they're tapping out say six or seven to cast one of those big prototype artifacts as a finisher, countering that's going to feel good. 
and they're not going to have like 11 mana to spend on it. So essentially is as close as you can get to a hard counter. Paying four is a lot, especially in a format where people are tapping out for things. So that should see some play. Sky Strike Officer. This is a rare one blue, two generic for a human soldier. It's a two, three with flying. Whenever Sky Strike Officer attacks, create a one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. And tap three untapped soldiers you control. Draw a card. I mean, this card's good. They're, they're pushing Azorius uh, white-blue soldiers pretty hard in this set. Even for Constructor, there's a lot of good soldiers, and we already have a lot of good soldiers. This could probably make the cut. The only drawback here is that the three-drop slot in aggro and mid-range decks is like, there's a lot of power, right? So I don't know really what you cut to make this work, but if you want to play this card and you want to do a go-wide aggressive soldier deck, this is where it's at. Sky Strike Officer's good. Next one is Splitting the Power Stone. One blue, two generic for sorcery is an additional cost to cast this spell, Sacrifice, an artifact, and create two tapped Power Stone tokens. If the sacrificed artifact was legendary, draw a card. So this seems to me like what you'll want to do is split the Power Stone by sacrificing a Power Stone and then making two more Power Stones. Kind of ramps you if you're just playing big artifacts. I'm not really sold on this card, just because it seems kind of narrow and doesn't do anything other than create power stone tokens. And it's a three cost sorcery. If this was say even a four cost instant, I think it would be much better. I don't know that that's gonna see much. If power stones are good, it will. Next is Stern Lesson. One blue, two generic, draw two cards then discard a card, create a tap power stone token. This could see some play, drawing two cards and discarding one, especially if you discard something that can unearth or you can play it from your graveyard and have a power stone token. Cool. As I, I feel like I keep saying this, but if we have good artifacts, Stern Lesson will be included there. Next is Take Flight. One blue, three generic for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has flying in whenever this creature attacks, draw a card. So it's kind of cool. Auras have historically been pretty bad, except for in certain scenarios. It's kind of cool that the creature only has to attack, not deal combat damage to a, an opponent. And you get to draw a card. If you leave this on for two turns or three turns, maybe, you get to draw two or three cards off of it. Not really sold on it for four mana. I don't know what deck really wants this. I'm going to say it probably won't see play unless we have some aura enablers or things that care about auras which i haven't seen yet next is teferi temporal pilgrim two blue three generic for a legendary planeswalker comes in with four loyalty and whenever you draw a card put a loyalty counter on teferi temporal pilgrim so you know every turn that it flips over to your turn you draw a card he gets a loyalty counter zero is also draw a card so if you want to draw a card each turn you can tick to ferry up by two loyalty per turn. You can also minus two to create a two, two blue spirit creature token with vigilance. And whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature and minus 12. God forbid you get this up there on an opponent target opponent chooses a permanent. They control and returns it to its owner's hand. Then they shuffle each non land permanent. They control into their owner's library. So essentially they basically get so far behind that you have an extremely likely chance of winning. I think Teferi ideally comes down on turn 5. You hit the minus 2. If you're under pressure, you make a 2-2 two, two blue spirit that grows every time you draw a card. You have a counter spell or whatever in your hand. They pass the turn back to you. You do 0, draw a card, and then all of a sudden your blue spirit is a 4-4. Four, four, and then you just go to town by drawing cards or keep creating spirits. I'm not sure that you're going to hit the minus 12, but hey, you never know. If you do, it's going to be... Game ending. Teferi is great. Teferi should see play and control for sure. Third Path Savant. One blue, two generic for a human wizard. Two, three, tap seven, draw two cards. No. Way too expensive. Although, Power Stones can help you pay for that. Don't forget. But still, I would say no. Thopter Mechanic. One blue, one generic for human artificer. 2-1. When you draw your second card each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Thopter Mechanic. When Thopter Mechanic dies, create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. So this is going to be a 2-drop two 2-1 two, unless you can draw two cards per turn. 
you know, without something that does draw you a card every turn, you're going to be relying on your instants to draw you extra cards and stuff. So this could get this could get decently big, even if it becomes a 3-2, say on turn 3 or 4, or even a 4-3. And then whenever it dies, you get a Thopter. It's kind of cool. And the Thopter is an artifact creature, so it could trigger other artifact enter the battlefield synergies. I think Thopter mechanic could see play. Urza Power Stone Prodigy. One blue, two generic for a human artificer. One three, Vigilance. So pretty defensive creature here. We also have tap one generic mana, tap it, draw a card, discard a card. That would enable your Thopter mechanic right there. Uh, whenever you discard one or more artifact cards, create a tap Power Stone token. This ability triggers only once each turn. This is a lot of value for three mana. Having a 1-3 blocker to block 2-2s two and little tokens and stuff and giving it Vigilance mean that you could attack with it if you want and then you could tap it and draw a card and discard a card. Drawing card, discarding cards is always good. Looting out your lands in the later game, getting rid of them, finding answers. Urza Power Stone Prodigy, very, very good uncommon. Next card is Urza's Command. Two blue, two generic for an instant. Choose two. Creatures you don't control get minus two, minus zero till end of turn. Create a tap power stone token. Create a tapped zero, zero colorless construct artifact creature token. With this creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. Or scry one and draw a card. So two most likely modes here, I think, are you create the construct token. If you have power stones coming into battlefield all the time, that thing gets to be a three, three, or four, four. And if you're under pressure, use the first mode to give creatures minus two, minus zero until you can set up a board wipe. I don't think you're going to pay four mana to create a power stone token and scry and draw a card unless you're really, really under pressure. But having the draw ability is fine if you really need to find your game closer or board wipe or something to stabilize. I think it's an okay card. I don't know that it's going to see a lot of play. All the modes just seem a little bit too weak for me. And the versatility doesn't really make up for that. Next card is Urza's Rebuff. Two blue, one generic for an instant. Choose one. Counter target spell or tap up to two target creatures. This counter spell I'm pretty excited for. I keep mentioning the mono blue tempo deck, but they're using Urtai's Scorn right now, which is a three mana counter. I believe it's the exact same cost. But being able to tap up to two target creatures before your opponent swings back at you or to close out the game whenever you have a haughty djinn and the Talarian Terrors out there really makes a difference. Having that extra mode on your counter spell is going to be really good. And I think Urza's rebuff goes for sure right into the mono blue tempo deck. And would not surprise me at all to see Control playing this to be able to tap aggro's early creatures and get to their board wipe and stabilize that board. Weakstone Subjugation. One blue enchantment aura, enchant artifact or creature. When Weakstone Subjugation enters the battlefield, you may pay three generic mana. If you do, tap Enchanted Permanent, and Enchanted Permanent doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Limited removal for blue. Wing Commando. One blue, two generic for human soldiers. A 2-2 flying with prowess. This could see some play in budget Is It Prowess decks. We are seeing the return of Monastery Swift Spear in red that also has prowess we also have a jaya planeswalker that creates one one prowess monks so in a spells matter deck that deck looks like it's taking shape um probably not going to be a tier one but it's probably going to do some work in a budget is it spells matter deck zephyr sentinel one blue one generic for a human soldier told you there'd be a lot of soldiers two one flash flying when zephyr sentinel enters the battlefield return up to one other target creature you control to its owner's hand. If it was a soldier, put a plus one plus one counter on Zephyr Sentinel. One thing really matters here. It's the clause return up to one other target creature you control. So I think this is best used when you have a couple other soldiers out. You save this one. And then they go to remove your creature with an Infernal Grasp or a cut down or something. And then you flash in Zephyr Sentinel, you return that creature to your hand. All of a sudden, Zephyr Sentinel has a counter on it, so it's a 3-2 flyer, and then you replay that soldier next turn. Very good tempo play. Zephyr Sentinel's good. I think it's going to see some play. 
Arcane Proxy, seven generic mana, or you can use the new prototype mechanic for the Brothers War, and you can pay two blue and one generic, and it keeps all the same card text. It just becomes blue and a 2-1. When Arcane Proxy enters the battlefield, if you cast it, exile target instant or sorcery card with mana value less than or equal to Arcane Proxy's power from your graveyard. Copy that card, you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. So if you bring this in for three mana, you get to do that to any mana cost uh, instant or sorcery from your grave from your graveyard that has two mana or less. Or if you pay the full seven, it is four. This card is going to be excellent. It's a mythic rare. It's probably going to be one of the, the first cards that I craft to <laughs> build some cool um, either spells matter or in control. Just... Having another Fading Hope when you need it. Having another, uh, I don't know, anything. Just any two mana blue or red removal spell. Arcane Proxy looks sweet. Next up we have Coastal Bulwark. Two generic mana for a 1-3 defender. It has plus two plus zero as long as you control an island. So it's a 3-3 defender. You can also tap two generic mana and tap it to surveil one. Seems fine and limited, not constructed playable. Next is Combat Courier. I read this earlier, and I like this card more every time I read it. It's one generic mana for a 1-1. It also has Unearth, so you can return this from your graveyard for one blue mana. It gains haste and exile at the beginning of the next end step, or if it would leave the battlefield. It also has two generic mana, sacrifice it to draw a card. I think this card's pretty cool. You cast this on turn one if you go first. Um, if you're interested in stalling the game out, you declare this as a blocker against maybe a 2-2 or 3-2 or whatever. You tap 2 mana, you sacrifice it, draw a card, prevent the damage from coming through to you. Then later in the game, you unearth it for 1 blue mana, and then sacrifice it for 2 whenever you have extra mana and draw another card. I think Combat Courier is a sweet little common, and I like it, and I'm going to try it. Depth Charge Colossus. 9 mana, it has prototype for 6 comes in as a 6-6. Six, six. It does not untap during your untap step. You can pay 3 mana to untap it. Pretty simple card. It's just a big beater that doesn't untap. Um, yeah, common, limited stuff. Next is Hulking Metamorph. 9 mana. This is an uncommon. It prototypes in for 4 as a 3-3. Three, three. And you may have Hulking Metamorph enter the battlefield as a copy of an artifact or creature you control. Except it's an artifact creature in addition to its other type. And its power and toughness are equal to Hulking Metamorph's power and toughness. This is a pretty good uncommon. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to justify doing a 9-drop 7-7 seven, seven for Constructed. And it's going to copy some other creature that's probably, you know, 4 or 5 mana or something. And if it's not legendary, like, what effects are you going to be getting off that? But the 4-drop version is pretty cool. Because there's a lot of creatures that have entered the battlefield effects, and it copies before it enters, so you can get that effect. Um, and it's going to be potent if you have some other good stuff out. I don't know if you're ever going to pay 9 for it, though. So I would just plan on doing it as a 4-drop 3-3 three, three that copies another creature. It could see some play. It's going to be fun. Next one is Spotter Thopter. 8-drop Thopter. 4-5 flying when it comes in, scry X where X is its power. So scry 4, unless you prototype it in as a 2-3 flyer for 4 and scry 2. Decent. Having a 2-3 flyer for 4 is fine, but there are a lot of powerful 3 drops and 4 drops in the set, so I don't think it's really going to make the cut. Next card I'm super excited to play with, Surge Engine. 2 generic mana, it's a construct, it's a 3-2 defender. You tap one blue mana, this creature loses defender, and gains it cannot be blocked. So for an investment of three mana that you can invest on different turns, it becomes a 3-2 unblockable. Sweet already. Then you can tap another blue mana and two generic. It becomes blue and has base power and toughness 5-4. Activate only if Surge Engine doesn't have defender. So only if you've activated the other step. And then for six, you get to draw three cards. Activate only if Surge Engine is blue and only once. So even without the six draw three cards, that's kind of just icing on the cake. Having this out on turn two to block one ones or whatever, 
And then tapping a single blue mana when you want to go on the defensive and then being able to pump it even more if they don't have an answer to it. Very, very good card. Love this card for tempo. Kind of love it for control. Kind of love it all around. Surge Engine's good. Next card is the Temporal Anchor. Three blue, three generic for a legendary artifact. That type matters a lot when you're talking about paying six for something. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry two. Whenever you choose to put one or more cards on the bottom of your library while scrying, exile that many cards from the bottom of your library. During your turn, you may play cards exiled with Temporal Anchor. So, the fact that it's an artifact means that Power Stone tokens can, in fact, pay for this. It is legendary, so you can only have one out, but this is a powerhouse. You scry, if you put them on the bottom, you can exile them, and then you can play them with Temporal Anchor. So if you get this down and it sticks, needless to say, it's going to be a game winner. Anchors, very good, should see play. Next card is Teresian Mindbreaker. This is our final card. Seven generic mana for a Juggernaut artifact creature. It's a 6-4. Whenever Teresian Mindbreaker attacks, defending player mills half their library rounded up. You can also unearth this, have it attack again before you sacrifice it from your graveyard for three blue, one generic. I haven't seen a lot of mill cards in this, and um, I don't think this is for standard. Don't think it's going to be standard playable. They mill half their library. If you get to attack again, they mill it again, but milling them out is probably not going to be in the win cons for standard, at least right now. So that is blue. I also have white done. If you want to check the description for the playlist, you can check out the uh, color white for the Brothers War. Thank you very much for hitting that thumbs up, and consider subscribing for all the other colors as they come out. And I'll be looking forward to playing some arena and streaming and making videos for that when the Brothers War releases. Until that time, have a great day.